Good morning. It's news from the Roots on Mountain Stream TV. Today is Tuesday, September 18th, 2018. And my guest this morning is Tom Baker with the Veteran Support Group of Jackson County. Um, and we want to talk about some events that are coming up that are uh, important for that group and for everybody. Uh, Tom, what, lead, lead us off. Well, uh, number one, thank you, Auburn, for allowing me to have time to be on your program. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, my name's Tom Baker, and I am president of the... We changed our name a few, a few months ago uh, from the Jackson County... Uh, a veteran support group to the Jackson County Veterans Organization. Okay. Uh, they just felt like if we ever did try to move towards a 501c uh, setting that, that it would come across better. So okay. uh, we have a local veterans group uh, independent of the American Legion or the, the VFW. Uh, we started it about six years ago, me and another veteran from Vietnam, uh, uh, Darwin Thomas, and we mostly started it because uh, we wanted to make sure that the young vets coming back from Iraq and Afghanistan uh, didn't necessarily have to go through what we went through when we came back. So we were initially sort of a support group to try to uh, help those guys and gals uh, ease back into life at uh, civilian life and life going to school at Western. So that was the uh, the origin of our of our group. Uh, uh, if, if you would allow me, I could read you our quick mission statement. Uh, sure. Uh, the support group is a campus and countywide initiative intended to bring together veterans from different eras to discuss their experiences in the military and since returning to civilian life. Combat veterans from various branches, operations, and rank joined together to talk privately and openly, mentoring our younger vet students, staff, and faculty. So that was how we begun. Okay. Very good. Um, well, certainly a, a worthy organization and one which is much needed. Uh, Given the conditions that um, veterans face when they come back from combat situations um, in the world, throughout the world, um, as we know, there's a terrible uh, problem of homelessness and mental illness that, that, is, uh, that is really not being addressed on, on uh, the level it needs to be addressed, if at all. Well, we, we believe you're correct, Auburn. My, the VA is getting a little better on uh, working with veterans that are struggling. Uh, PTSD is a term now that gets thrown around a lot like it was a new development. But uh, post-traumatic post yeah. post stress uh, uh, has been around since cavemen threw rocks at each other. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's gone under different names, shell shock, battle fatigue, many, many uh, different names. But the bottom line is a lot of the men and women in the armed forces are, have to do and endure things that, that change them dramatically and affect them really dramatically. And uh, I think it is a duty of, of um, all the veteran group and people in general to understand that some of these vets are struggling when they come back. That, uh, you know, they've just been through so much that their uh, survival uh, gears are different than just the average John Doe walking down the street. And they react differently to certain situations, be it certain smells or certain sound, fireworks, uh, a lot of the vets in our group still struggle with uh, the 4th of July and going to the, to the celebration because it reminds them of times when they were under fire. So there's a lot of, a lot of issues to deal with. One of the events that we're in our sixth year of doing is uh, what we call the hump 
uh, a march and we do it on Mountain Heritage Day which is coming up real quick the 29th of uh, September uh, and a group of vets uh, gather at the uh, fairgrounds and we march into Silva and uh, we carry the American flag and some of us dress up on our gear uh, it's veterans and friends of veterans and the purpose of it is to bring attention to the number 22 that's uh, that's the number of vets day in day out that are killing themselves some older vets some younger vets but it, it's a terrible number we've lost a couple of veterans out of our group in the last year and two or three friends of veterans have killed themselves so in a small group where you've only got 40 or 45 people and you've already lost five that that kind of shows you if you multiply that nationwide it's it's an astronomical number I just want to clarify what you just said which is that 22 veterans commit suicide every day in the United States of America. Every, every single day and uh, you know the, the psychologists will tell you there's a million different reasons for that but when the smoke clears it's that one and some of them, many of them are combat vets, some of them aren't, some of them just struggle with being separated from a core group when they get out. Uh, some of them struggle with being separated from family. But whatever the reason, it's just so terribly sad that they're not getting the help and they wind up, you know, killing themselves. Uh, it, puts a burden on our hearts to to see that and, and like I say uh, uh, we've lost several in our group and so the the hump or the march uh, is it's to emphasize the number 22 and uh, we start there at the fairgrounds and we march along the road and we have the American flag as I said and we have the number two attached to many of our packs just to make people aware make them stop for a minute and think about maybe some family member that's struggling a little bit that they could reach out to. So we're, we're hoping to get uh, uh, the message across. And there are many other good uh, organizations that, that try to help in that. Uh, but that's our little step. We, we focus on that. And anybody that that wants to participate or stand on the side of the road and, and uh, uh, watch us go by. Uh, we crank out of the fairground around 10 o'clock uh, the 29th and we'll, we'll circle the fairground we'll come out with the help of the uh, WC um, uh, police officers. Uh, they stop the traffic and we march across the four lane and hit 107 and head towards Silva. So the 29th of September 10 o'clock in the morning and you start from where? At the, the, fair? the fairground there at uh, the old Camp Lab School uh, where they have the uh, okay. festivities yes, for the yes, uh, heritage. Yes. Uh, right in front of that school, that old school. Right. Yeah, we're generally on the on the back side next to the four lane where we start and okay. uh, uh, I don't think you can miss us. Uh, uh, some of us uh, put packs on uh, we we try to um, emulate uh, the the humps that we've done in combat before and uh, one of the thoughts is that the pain we suffer on the hump is nothing compared to the pain that some of these vets suffer when they come back mm. uh, from deployment and they struggle to fit back into a society that doesn't understand them that's a, that's a long walk from uh, Coley to Silva. We're, we're talking about uh, five five miles. It's right at six. Uh, six miles. Yeah, and uh, that past two or three years, we've stopped there in the Catamount Gap, and uh, we do a repel off of the rock face, and kind of like a little photo op. We <laughs> we 
have the uh, folded flag and we just play the flag about halfway down the rock cliff and mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know it's just a, a, a moment of showing uh, patriotism and, and uh, love of country and uh, it it's about pulling the crowd together the bonding and uh, the civilians kind of resonate with what the veterans are going through and so it, it's it's a neat moment and then we we hump or march on into Silva and hoist a, a beer or two and <laughs> and uh, then we go our separate ways. Mm -hmm. Now there's one other program if we have time I'd like to We talk have all about. time you need. Yeah. The uh, the veterans group for the last five or six years uh, puts on a program right around Veterans Day. This year it's November the 7th uh, and it's always at the theater room of uh, the, the UC. Uh, they're on campus right next to the alumni tower. Uh, that, that's, uh, are we talking about where the clock tower is, the university center? Correct. Upstairs the in the grand yeah. room, I guess? or Well, it's not in the grand room, it's in the theater room. It's on the third floor. Okay. And uh, we have what we call the unseen scars. Uh, and, and the motto is that in war there are no unwounded soldiers mm -hmm. and and uh, it's a uh, it's not a round table discussion it's a panel talk uh, by anywhere from six to eight uh, veterans about their experiences of going into the military uh, a couple of them are Vietnam vets that got drafted mm -hmm. and uh, they like to say they went kicking and screaming mm -hmm. but uh, they didn't uh, and then some of the younger vets, uh, we have two or three females that, that tell their story, uh, which is a unique approach. Most people think of veterans and they just think of guys, and there are thousands of dedicated young women that, uh, and older women that uh, served our country. So it gives them a chance to, uh, to tell their story. Uh, we ask them to go no deeper than they feel like going. Uh, sometimes we cry, sometimes we laugh, but it's uh, we invite students and staff and faculty and, and anybody in the community to come and listen to the stories. Uh, and you'd be surprised how many, uh, uh, especially young kids, have no idea what veterans have gone through. Uh, how it affected their wives or their mothers or their kids or their friends. Uh, so it, it's, a, it's an opportunity for people to understand. And uh, like I say, this is the sixth year we put it on. And uh, hopefully it'll, it'll continue because I think it, it's a, a service to the veterans. Uh, uh, trying to get the message out that it it's okay not to be okay mm. and that uh, there is no weakness in asking for help. And so again, what, what day and time will this be taking uh, The Unseen Scars this year is uh, November the 7th. It's a Wednesday and it will start at the theater room at 6 o'clock. Generally runs about two hours and uh, I want to add too, this year the uh, uh, the head of the, uh, I'm not exactly sure of his title, uh, Jeff Hughes is a good friend of mine and, and a great guy. And uh, the uh, UC has agreed to uh, host a reception right after the Unseen Scars, which, you know, they'll have uh, probably light hors d'oeuvres and uh, Cokes and stuff to drink, but it will give the audience a chance to actually talk with some of the vets and you know maybe ask them questions or uh, relay some of their stories uh, so it, it it'll be it has in the past and I think this year will be no different it's been a great opportunity for people to hear the veterans uh, uh, now we've got uh, fall is a busy time of year we we work real close with the Student Veterans Association on campus and we do our best to get them. They're pretty busy between regular life and school and 
and trying to have their own group, but we pulled them into to stuff. And the, so I, I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you, but the, I, I wasn't aware there was a student veterans organization on campus. Th this is these are students of who were who are vets. Mm -hmm. In other words, uh, so it's, correct. It's, yeah, there uh, there okay. has been for several years, uh, uh, and it one year it'll be real strong and, and a lot of people in it and the next year it may not be quite as strong but uh, do you have an idea of how many veterans are going as students to well brianna ford is the um, uh, the student veteran coordinator she uh, really works hard helping them line out the problems with the gi bill and, and get into classes and and whatnot and she does a great service to the to the vet, her and, and her assistant, whose name won't come to me right now. But uh, uh, from what she tells me, generally there's about 300 veterans uh, uh, part of the, the I campus. I have no idea. Huh? Yeah. Hmm. And if you throw in staff and faculty who are veterans, you, the number gets on up towards 400, hmm. 425. So there's a, there's a, definite veteran population at Western and uh, we and at SCC also uh, uh, Tony Knotts uh, uh, is the Brianna Ford of SCC if I said that right <laughs> and uh, they they help those veterans going in uh, at SCC uh, we our veteran group Jackson County uh, Veterans Organization has uh, decided to, to do a fundraiser this year. It uh, consists of me doing a throat through ride on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Uh, on a bike? On a bicycle. And uh, I've, I've done it uh, four years ago and it took us like 54 hours and it kicked our butt. Uh, and they, I'm four and years older. And we, we had this conversation the other day. You're talking about a through ride. I thought you were just talking about from Silver to Asheville, but no, you're talking about the entire length of the Blue Ridge Parkway from it, Cherokee to Rock Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yes, 469 miles. And it's, uh, it's a fundraiser, uh, and it's uh, an attempt to to draw attention to uh, the needs of veterans. Uh, and there's a possibility that I can't physically do the whole thing without laying down a couple hours to sleep. And if I do, I'm hoping that there'll be another veteran or two that'll fill in for me while I'm resting, they can ride. So you're telling me in the past you've done this without sleep just 54 hours straight of bicycle riding? Well, we did it in 54 hours. We, the, when we did it four years ago, we rode for 20 hours, slept for two, rode for 16, slept for four, and then finished it. That's but, just <laughs> remarkable. Uh, that's unbelievable. Well, it, it, it's one of those things where there is a fine line between bravery and stupidity. And, uh, <laughs> uh, well, that no, is that that's that's <laughs> really incredible. And, and uh, if you don't mind, and you don't have to answer this for our audience, what what? How how old are you? I turned seventy last or a month ago. Well, that should inspire an entire generation of people to uh, not fear old age. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's, I've, I've been very fortunate and uh, uh, I do believe and have always believed in taking care of myself. So uh, uh, these, uh, uh, I guess I guess I'm lucky, but I kind of thought that me being older uh, might uh, draw more people to, to donate. We're asking it's 469 miles, and we're asking people to donate a penny a mile, a dime a mile. We're asking a dollar a mile, but really just whatever they can give. They can give a dollar, or they can give five dollars, they can give ten dollars. Where would they, who would they contact, how would they send Okay, them? they can uh, contact me via email. We're putting out some flyers, but my email is trbaker. 817 
at yahoo.com. Shade, they, shade again. T R Baker 817 at yahoo.com. Okay. Or they can call me on my cell at 828 508 5522 and I'll explain things. We have a, a little uh, uh, sponsorship form that they can fill out. We won't ask for any money until the ride is done. Uh, but uh, we've already had Stansbury Insurance was the first to step up and uh, made a nice donation. Uh, we've had uh, several others step up uh, promising uh, to support a lot of individuals. And uh, so anybody out there that uh, groups or civic organizations, I know the, the Rotary is is uh, talking about trying to put something together to help us in uh, the American Legion. So so we're getting, we're, they're paying us some attention and it's a good cause. The, the plan is for whatever monies we raise, we're going to split it 50-50 with the student vet group on West at Western and half of our 50% we're going to give to the veterans group at SCC so it's all about helping these younger vets primarily uh, and so it's a it's a good cause and uh, I hope that when I finish with this long ride I will park my bicycle for several months and just get on my Harley and ride, which has a nice motor. Well, I, I'll tell I mean, I have ridden parts of the Blue Ridge Parkway by bicycle. And in fact, the Canary Coalition, uh, for several years in a row, did something called a Relay for Clean Air, which was from, we, we did it from the top of Clingman's Dome to Asheville and ended in a big concert at the end for, to raise money for the Canary Coalition. And I can tell you that the Blue Ridge Parkway is one of the most strenuous uh, bike rides you can do anywhere. Um, it, it's not a, an easy ride. I mean, it's up and down, but yeah. the up parts uh, can really be challenging. After about 200 miles, the flats hurt. So, uh, you know, and you just have to, it's kind of like, uh, really not to coin a phrase, but it's kind of like, uh, being in combat, you just have to set your mind to it mm. and put the pain out of your head and, and go on with it. And so uh, an, another part of that purpose is to tell people that the pain that, that I will feel and those who helped me on that ride pale in comparison to what some of these vets are going through. And so puts it on more of a personal level that uh, you know we need to reach out to these these vets young and old if, if we see them struggling uh, I get probably two calls a month from either vets themselves or friends of veterans some faculty at Western are really on the ball and they will contact me to maybe talk to these vets or uh, so we have a, um, a connection uh, uh, I can't think of the proper term but uh, a support web that we are slowly creating at the university and in the community to where people can reach out to us and we will step up and do our best to, to help these vets meet with them if that's what they want or take them to the VA or sometimes it's just a matter of sitting down and listening to them letting them talk and cry and maybe laugh a little bit so that's our that's our purpose in uh, being able to be on your program to to explain some of that is is great and we thank you tremendously. So, so tell us again, wh when will this ride take place? The ride will be the first weekend in October. That's coming up, okay. Yeah, yeah. Two, two weeks. Uh, me and a buddy of mine, Patrick Hinkle, not this past weekend, but the weekend before that, did the, the entire ride 
in tandem. He would do 15, 20 miles, and then I'd do 15 or 20 miles, and uh, as sort of a training leg. And you have a vehicle that kind yeah. of yeah, we support sag, uh, sag wagon, whatever you want to call it, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, you kind of get tired of honey buns and, and uh, Gatorade. But uh, <laughs> uh, and the same thing, my son, who has helped me in a lot of these situations, uh, will be my support on the through ride in October, and uh, I have asked a, a couple of vets who bike to, to kind of be there for me if I if I need uh, you know it's one of those things as you get older you you're supposed to be a little wiser and I don't know that I can do the entire thing I might need some help uh, I might not but uh, my wife's threatened me with bodily harm if I don't have some backups so, uh, <laughs> So that's the real risk. That's it. <laughs> the, the wrath. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, we're we're putting forth an effort, and uh, uh, like I've repeated several times, it, it's all about reaching out and and helping these vets. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, incredibly uh, commendable uh, of you to be helping to organize all these activities and putting your own body out there on the Blue Ridge Parkway and uh, entering the, uh, the hump and um, it's, uh, it's a lot to do and, and I hope that you uh, feel that you have community support. Uh, certainly uh, we're, we're trying to do what we can. At well, I, I thank you for that and, and uh, the community has stepped up uh, a lot. Uh, in the last four or five years, uh, Sheila sets her out at the uh, Veterans uh, uh, Affairs Office uh, uh, is doing a great job, and you know they've got the uh, uh, the parade, the Veterans Day parade coming up, and they've really got it down to a T. Uh, you know the the band from Smoky Mountain generally is there, and, and a lot of vets, the older vets, they'll. Uh, put them in a car or truck and, and uh, some of us uh, vets that are able to we'll, we will uh, do the little march so uh, the, the county as a whole uh, Mr. Hooper helped put up those flags on Main Street uh, it's, it's just uh, heart touching to, uh, to see that uh, on the different days Veterans Day, Memorial Day so uh, uh, the community, I think, is, is back in the vets real well here in Jackson County. Um, I mean, you, of course, are, are, are yourself a, a, a vet, and, and uh, I've listened to you uh, read. You, you do a lot of writing, um, or, or so it seems, and uh, you have, you're now publishing a, a book about your m memoirs from uh, Vietnam, and um, and I have to say it's enthralling uh, to to listen to your you're a good writer, and um, and a good speaker as well, a public speaker. And at City Lights Bookstore, that there's an open mic night um, once a month, and uh, you've been reading from your book uh, in a series of uh, of, of, of months. Yeah. Um, Tell us about that a little bit. What the, what's what's that like? What what's it been like to recount your memories in writing and to read them publicly? Well, I've, I've actually got two books. I've got one, a novel called The Hawk and Dove, coming out that that took me ten years to write. Uh, it was my first attempt at trying to heal myself a little bit uh, and I wanted to do it in a little bit non-traditional mode from the, the memoir and uh, uh, having married a uh, little peace hippie uh, <laughs> from, from the 60s, uh, uh, the, the title come natural, uh, being a combat vet and an army brat, uh, uh, I did have hawkish tendencies and 
her being a uh, uh, peace hippie whose father flew C-130 gunships in Nam, she she had an element of of uh, peace and she'll kill me for this uh, tranquility and collaboration. And so I tried to, to take those two principles and mesh them into a series of stories. And the Hawk and Dove flows through five, six uh, centuries of, of combat where the Hawk and Dove, you know, the Hawk generally being uh, the, the guard of the warrior and the Dove being the, the peace symbol how they work together and it was to sort of show that that combat vets are not just hardcore killing machines they're human beings that get thrown into to very terrible situations and they do the best they can under very difficult situations so i tried to tell that story and intertwine uh, family relationships and uh, you know, uh, love of, of uh, people, and so it it was a start towards uh, the healing of myself. And uh, there are a lot of uh, programs out there now that are proven beneficial to vets to write. You don't have to worry about getting them published. Just put your thoughts down. Sometimes you can't talk to people about what you've been through because they don't, they've not been there, they don't understand and sometimes you can't even get the words out. But you, the pen can can help you and once I got the novel, which uh, I'll do a little selling here, uh, it's supposed to be out in the uh, uh, middle of October. Uh, I've got a memoir that, that I started right when I finished Hawk and Dove and it does get more uh, into the the combat that I went through and, and my experiences and then into the difficulties I had afterwards so hopefully we'll get it published so that maybe it could help some vets out there somewhere or family members of vets who struggle to understand why the, the vet left him and took his life and they, you know the the demons that we sometimes struggle with that haunt us they don't ever go away they're always there you you know job and family and life can put them back but sometimes certain things trigger them and those are the the thoughts that i wanted to put into the not only the hawk and dove but into the memoir it's it's, uh, it's fascinating to me, and, and I think it's an important lesson that as Americans, as human beings, we, we need to learn, is that uh, even though people might find themselves at odds over a spe specific war, such as the Vietnam War, um, that if you look at it from a historical perspective, uh, those two groups of people, the people who who actually had to fight in that war, and the people who were opposed to war uh, are not necessarily um, enemies, <laughs> and, right. and, 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 and they shouldn't be. Uh, you know, I, I think that, I know with maturity I have learned, I, I was in the peace camp during the Vietnam War, uh, I have learned that uh, the need to defend our country and ourselves, for that matter, on a personal basis, is very real. I mean, uh, there, there's an absolute necessity for an armed forces. Every, every, Sadly, it is. Every country in the world needs to defend itself. Every human being has to learn to defend themselves uh, for survival. Uh, even Gandhi acknowledged that. In fact, and, and some of my friends are going to be angry at me for for pointing this out, but when Gandhi in issued his demand to the British government, there were a list of ten demands, and the first one, the first one, was the right to bear arms um, uh, by by the Indian people. Uh, Gandhi recognized the need for people to um, defend themselves, and 
uh, and I think that uh, all people of reason will understand that need. The, the issue is not that we need to maintain a viable defense for our country. The issue is when those defense forces are employed for just and sometimes unjust reasons. And, and um, I, I think that more or less a, a consensus has developed that the Vietnam War was a war we probably should never have fought. Right. And, and, um, and I think many, most veterans, I don't, well, I can't say that, but, but many veterans have, have, would agree with that at this point, including Vietnam veterans. Um, and I, I was just watching a movie on um, Netflix about the Valerie Plame affair, if you're familiar with that about the Iraq War and, and the uh, reasons that were given by our government for going to fight in Iraq. And they had, apparently the Bush administration had asked the CIA to find evidence that would create a rationale for going to war in Vietnam, or in, in, in Iraq, excuse me. And um, the, the CIA diligently went out looking for evidence of weapons of mass destruction and they didn't find anything. They found bits and pieces of information uh, about sales of different materials that never took place and, and the people in power who wanted to go to war twisted that information and, and, and essentially lied to the American people about the existence of, of weapons of mass destruction in, in Iraq. And as a result, we went to war in Iraq, and how, how many, 8,000 Americans, soldiers, died there, and who knows how many Iraqis died, and, and, um, it, and, and how many veterans didn't die, came back with post-traumatic st stress disorder. Or maimed. Beyond. Or maimed. Uh, and and uh, ha how this has impacted, of course, it's not isolated to the veterans community. When those veterans come back, it impacts the lives of everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And, and stresses out the resources of the country. And, and um, I, I think that's, that's the issue. You know, it, it's I think uh, I think America learned a lot of things from the Vietnam War. Uh, a lot of things they learned they seem to have forgotten. But uh, that uh, you can be against the war, you can be against the government's effort, but don't be against the GI. They're trying to do the best they can under difficult circumstances. Now, having said that, one of the themes in the Hawk and Dove, uh, my novel, is that the heart of a warrior and the heart of the, the peace activists are linked in that they want the same thing. Their approach may be different due to necessities, but they're wanting peace. And so with that commonality, then uh, a lot of things can happen. But uh, as far as uh, the Iraq war, uh, I actually wound up being uh, one of the speakers on campus against that war mm -hmm. uh, because I had a strong feeling that we were being manipulated again, not totally unlike what occurred in Vietnam. You know, had somebody talked to Ho Chi Minh back in the 40s or even earlier, then that war might not have even been necessary. So. Uh, and we're still fighting that war, yeah. and, and in Afghanistan. I mean, yeah. it's it's an in, it's the longest war that America has ever been uh, a part of. Sadly, I think our politicians uh, they don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. They don't have kids in the military. They've not been in the military, so they're real quick to rattle their saber. And uh, uh, I think it was. Uh, 
or uh, Lord Wellington that said that 99% of all wars are caused by failed diplomacy mm -hmm. or no diplomacy at all. So we could do a lot more talking and and trying to figure out what the problems are before we just send troops in to, to kill people. And unfortunately there are people who profit from going to war and I think there is a, a certain amount of intention there as well to uh, sell weaponry. Well, and, you know, Eisenhower warned against that and yeah. he was an old warrior. He warned against that in uh, the 50s and uh, so it, it is true and uh, so maybe our small efforts uh, will reach people and make them understand that uh, uh, war is not a, a necessity. Uh, uh, don't put these young men and women through what they have to go through uh, unless it's just there is no other alternative, very similar to Japan attacking uh, the United States where we had to, to go. So. Uh, in our small way, Auburn, we, we try to make peace in the world, and then when the veteran, when Johnny comes marching home, uh, and Susie, we need to, to understand how to deal with them. So We need to take care of our veterans, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about our upcoming events and my novel, and uh, uh, just thank you for, for being here for us. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, please, if you will, go over the dates and times of all three of those events. And uh, Okay, the, the first event coming up is the, the hump, and it's on Mountain Heritage Day, which is the 29th of September, a week from this Friday. And uh, it'll kick off at 10 o'clock in the morning at the fairgrounds, the back side of the fairgrounds near the uh, the four lane, and uh, we will proceed into Silva to uh, to hang out and have a few beers at O'Malley's, who's been <laughs> supporting us, and then we're uh, we tried to pick one other place we're going to support the the cut, uh, and they've been very uh, supportive of veterans, so we're going to pop down there now. The, the next event in time of order is uh, my through ride on the parkway, or attempt at a through ride on the <laughs> parkway, as a fundraiser. And it is the first weekend in uh, uh, October. I believe it is the uh, 6th and 7th and possibly 8th of uh, October, uh, the weekend before fall break. And uh, you know, uh, if if you're interested in donating to our groups, uh, again, the, the email is trbaker817 at yahoo.com or call me at 828-508-5522. The, the third, third thing is the Unseen Scars program and it's scheduled for the 7th of November. Uh, at 6 o'clock at the UC building on campus of Western Carolina. And uh, it's uh, uh, a roundtable uh, talk uh, of veterans about their combat experiences or experiences uh, in the military and then coming back into school life, civilian life. So those three events are upcoming and there again, if you got any questions, just give me a holler. Okay, and look for your book, Hawks and Doves. And you said there was a second book? Uh, the memoir uh, that you've been hearing me read for the last uh, few weeks or months at uh, City Lights hopefully will be out in the spring. It's called The Memoir of a Warrior Wannabe. <laughs> and, um, well, you're not a warrior wannabe, you were a warrior. <laughs> well, it started out when I was three, so I was a wannabe. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. thank you for that. Thank you so much again for being here, Tom, and I hope you'll come back and we'll talk some more. Okay, anytime. <laughs>